Hi, I'm Lord Tony. Here with me today is Bowlman. And today, we're gonna be hacking the crap out of Mega Man Battle Network 3, just like we were doing the last couple days. Except that it's been about two weeks since my last video. But, let's not nitpick here. Today, we're gonna be working on Mega Man's style changes. One of the cool things that this game has to offer is that Mega Man here can style change. Uh, right now I'm in the wood shield style, and that is not actually what I want. Uh, let me re reload my state here. Uh, maybe it's what a reset. There we are. Okay. So here I am. This time I'm in a better form, the electric cust style. And, uh... One of the troublesome features about this game is that if you want a particular style, you are going to be grinding fights, because you got to go through 100 fights before you have the chance to change your style, or even upgrade an existing style. It is painful. So we're going to be trying to hopefully figure out how to hack ourselves a better style. If only I could hack myself better style in real life. So the uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hunt down the memory address where it's keeping track of the number of fights. Because theoretically, they got to be keeping that number somewhere. If every hundred fights they're giving you a reward, they got to increment that by one every single fight. So let's, uh, let's search all the memory with the standard memory search tool here in MGBA. We're going to do a new search. Uh, we say we don't know, we don't have any idea what the value is here. Uh, I don't know how many fights I've actually been in. And then we're going to run around until we get into a fight. Hopefully I've got the goods to kill these guys in one hit, so you don't have to wait on me to do a long-form fight here. Thanks, Plant Man. You're the best. I think Plant Man's banned in tournaments. Okay, so theoretically, uh, whatever that value was, it's now one bigger. So we want to say value 1 and then changed by value. I imagine if you have a number that's going down, like ammo or something, you would put a negative 1 here to check that. But uh, now it's increased by 1. Let's search within all these numbers, and that should narrow it down. It didn't narrow it down much at all. But uh, theoretically, if we kept doing this, if we kept going through fights and narrowing down this list more and more every time, saying the ones that have incremented by 1, we'd eventually run into the memory address we care about. And I've already done that off-camera to save a little time. <clears throat> I have here the, the memory address for the number of fights. So this is a good jumping off point, because what I know now is uh, somewhere, maybe after a fight or, yeah, probably after a fight, they're going to be uh, writing this address into, they're, they're going to be updating the RAM value of that. So here in the debugger, I'm going to say that I want to set a watch point a watch point for a read, so watch forward slash r, and then that memory address. Okay? And what that does is it says, I'm going to be, like, uh, it's going to break the game's loop and uh, let me type stuff in whenever the game tries to read that memory address. So if we get into another fight, which hopefully I can beat in one hit with my crappy deck that has, like, 50 different types of uh, codes in there, you should probably keep your code library down to maybe four codes. Come on, Drill Man, hit the fire guy twice. You never let me down, Drill Man. All right, and there we go, we have a read. It looks like, yeah, it read the value and it read the value four. And it seems like the next address that's going to do is it's going to be trying to add one onto I, I guess it must have read that value and put it into the register R0, and now it's trying to add 1 to it. I guess after it does that, it's going to try to write the memory address back. So what we can do from this point, I suppose, is we can just say we want to WR for write register, R0, and then we're going to put hex 64 in here, which is 100. So it's going to... and let me check the status of those registers now. Okay, good. It wrote, it wrote the 64 into R0, and it's going to add one onto it and presumably save it back into memory. So let's hit C to continue. Oh, and it looks like it's reading it again. This time, 
it read a 65. So uh, I think it's exactly what I'm expecting. So it added the 64, wrote it into memory, and then somewhere else down the line, it read it uh, as 65. Okay, I'm going to continue on there. Okay. And it looks like it's reading it again. Uh, and it's reading that number we put in, so we can continue there. And it's reading it again. Continue. How many times does it need to read this value? Ah, look at that! Is it another style change? Okay, beautiful. It is another style change. It looks like we found it. That would be the wood shadow style. Wood shadow? Okay, so already, whenever we want to change forms, we can literally do that same thing I did here. But uh, I think we can probably do a little bit better than that. Oh wow, weapon plus one? Is that what the shadow style does? She'll take double damage from file fire-based attacks, huh? So I've never actually used the set shadow style before, but I'm going to use this golden opportunity to say right now that I do not know what my value is here. I'm going to say one byte is probably where they're uh, where they're saving that uh, form in. Probably one byte of memory, or one bit of dang it, eight bits of memory. One byte is all it takes for that. I don't know what the value is now, so let's just do a new search and then change forms and see what actually changed. Maybe we can hunt down that memory address this way. Overwrite. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's find another one. Sure. Okay. And then, of course, it makes me go into the nav cust menu. I need to just take that part out of the game. Okay. So now it's changed, and I don't know what it's changed by, but maybe we can search within for all the RAM addresses that have changed? Okay, it doesn't narrow it down by much at all. But if we were to do that exact same thing, where we went in here and forced a, uh, forced a level up or a style change every time, we could do the same sort of thing, where we walk through memory and narrow it down to find the memory address. And that's exactly what I did. I found that this memory address right here, this 200... 1881 is the style change guy. So that's it right there. This wood shadow style turns out to be uh, one byte, and it's the value 52 right now. So let's open up our uh, let's open up our little Mega Man menu here and take a look at that wood style. So here, oh, actually, if I go, I know this is the right memory address, so I can highlight this and say open in memory viewer, and it'll take me right to that spot. What did we say it was? Uh, 881. So 1C, that's not what I thought it was. Hmm. Oh, 52. What are they, are they talking about there? Is that... <laughs> Why are they saying 52 here if it's C1 there, and that's actually 28? 34? Ah, here we go, here we go. This is the one. 34, that's actually 52. So, hex 34. If we change this here, we actually just changed our style. And, oddly enough, 24, 34, uh, somehow every frame is watching this memory address for if it needs to respond to it and do that cool, like, change animation. So this was the value I was on. If you took a look at my notes earlier, that heat cust was right there. What do we say this one was? Uh, hex 34, wood shadow. I need to uh, I need to take a look at the way these bytes are actually written, or the bits are written out. I have a feeling the first four bits represent like something. No, that can't be it because look, you got team and cust are, are both starting with one there. Yeah, I, I haven't qu completely figured out. Maybe the four is wood? Maybe that's how that goes? Like, if I went to... If I went to hex 14, would that be... Let's see. Hex 14, that would be wood cust style? Yeah! Yeah, it looks like woods all start with... Or all end with four, maybe? Hmm. I'm gonna have to figure out what all this means. But yeah, that's not important. You can you can now fiddle with this, and you've changed your form. Uh, it doesn't update those letters right there, but I'm sure if we leave and come back here... Yeah, we got our wood cust. 
And then if we leave and come back in, it sets it to electric cost. So there, we've actually uh, we've actually found where in memory uh, this address was. Now, one thing that I'd like to point out here is that um, the team style lets you have more mega chips in your in your deck. In your I don't know what do they call it your your chip deck, uh, and the cust style lets you start a battle with six chips in your opening hand rather than five, and that does not change just because you change this. It doesn't recalculate those values. What it it, it turns out that those values are in other memory addresses that I've gone through the trouble of finding for you. So. The, uh, if you are going to switch to cust style or team style, uh, you're going to need to adjust the value in your mega chip allowed and your giga chip allowed. That also means that we can we can change the number of or not giga chip allowed, but we can change the number of chips we can start with at every battle by changing that memory address. So we could set that to ten, no matter what style you're in or what payout you have equipped, and you always start with a full uh, a full deck of chips or a full hand of chips. And then this one right here, the number of mega chips allowed in your deck, that could be uh, set to 30, and then you could literally have nothing but mega chips in your deck, and you could have your overpowered hacked garbage. So instead of uh, instead of doing that one, I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this memory address over here, and we're gonna set that to uh, if the game will let me. Why why can I copy paste this in sometimes but not other times? I don't know. Okay, so it looks like that they said, okay, hex five, I get five chips in my opening hand. Okay, yeah, that's garbage. I want 10. Oh, can I change that from here? So 10 would be hex zero A. Yep, that's the number 10. So let's get into one more battle and just prove that that worked. Hi, Bullman. Hi, Bullman. Wait, I can just talk to Bullman. Oh, yes, and I... <laughs> apparently, I uh, switched my deck out, too. Uh, but that's that, that, that's not here nor there. Or ni neither here nor there, is that what people say? Am I going to be able to kill Bullman with this deck? Probably not if I don't aim. But, uh, yeah, it looks like I've started with 10 chips in my opening hand. So... That, I actually found that there, and uh, these other two memory addresses, you'll notice that they are contiguous, like 3, 4, 5, they're all the same right next to each other. So this is the information that may change when you equip things or change your forms. So this guy right here is your Giga Chips. If you ever manage to get Giga Chips in this game, you can set it up to whatever you like. Uh, you could have 30 Giga Chips equipped. No duplicates, though, not yet. Uh, one more little piece of bonus trivia here. Uh, here in Ghidra, I believe I've got the function for, uh, for checking when you're about to update. Uh, maybe I can find it again in here. So this right here, this function, here in memory address 0815, yeah, let's just copy that into Ghidra, and that should be the uh, the function where it's checking for uh, if you've leveled up or not. So this is it. Uh, it's just, like, here's what it might look like in, uh, in C, and here's the actual uh, arm thumb code. So what it's doing here... I don't know. I feel like the C is harder to read than the than this code. It looks like this mem this line has to be where it read that uh, how many battles you've been in, and then it moves 30, hex 32, which is 50, into the R2 register, and then it doubles it. It adds R2 to R2, and then puts that into R2. So it takes 50 and doubles it, and then that gives us a 100. And then this comparison right here is what compares the number of fights we have to the number 100. And then I suppose this jumps into the uh, level up code. So all we need to do in order to ROM hack this to make it to where we don't need to go through 100 battles, we could, we could change this RAM address right here, like just that one byte, from a 32 to a 16. And... I believe that would cut us down to only needing 50 battles, or if we wanted to do 10 battles, or one battle, or 
I don't know if we'd need zero battles. Uh, you can make it to where every single battle levels you up just by changing this one bite right here uh, using the uh, save stuff that I showed you last time. Yeah, I pretended to not remember at the beginning of this episode, but really, I did remember what we did last episode. So that's that for style changes. I think we've got everything, and I will put the memory addresses in the, uh, the description for this video, because those descriptions have been rather sparse recently. And we will continue on to more interesting stuff tomorrow. Actually, you know what? Probably not more interesting. And it's probably not tomorrow. Oh well, talk to you later.